Welcome to the News at 10. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Nasara lawmakers throw caution to the wind as they resort to fisticuffs to settle disagreement. High-level political drama plays out between Governor Ayo Fayoshe and his accuser, Tope Aluko. Both men settle differences. The wait continues over fuel scarcity. Nigerians bear the brunt of inadequate supply. And authorities across the world gear up for action following the leak of a confidential document showing tax havens used by ex-leaders. And on business news tonight, federal government announces plans to raise over 200 billion naira through bond auctions in the second quarter. Tonight on Sports News, Team Nigeria will eventually participate in this year's International Table Tennis Federation Africa Junior Championships after getting solution to funding problems. Resident doctors in Abuja swelled for war, gave 21-day ultimatum to government over alleged unpaid salaries. We begin tonight with commotion in the Nassau State House of Assembly, leading to an exchange of blows among lawmakers. Trouble began when the House leader moved a motion for the suspension of six lawmakers who allegedly accused other lawmakers of backing Governor Tanko Almakura's decision to appoint sole administrators as chairmen of local councils after the tenure of the elected expired elected once expired. Now the six lawmakers had accused their colleagues of allegedly accepting bribes from the governor before giving approval for the appointment of the sole administrators. The accused lawmakers refused to be suspended and that resulted to a rowdy session seen here which led to the exchange of blows. We'll have more on that story later. It does appear that an, like an unending drama as the now popular Dr. Tope Aluko in what could be a move at retracing his steps has gone to make peace with Governor Ayodele Fayoshi. About three months ago, Dr. Aluko, a former PDP secretary in Ikiti State, gave some damning revelations about the party and the governor and what he claimed was how the Ikiti 2014 governorship election was rigged. Dr. Aluku has come forward to reconcile with Governor Fayoshi, whom he said was the architect of a grand plan which was implemented to rig the election in favor of the PDP. In January, Dr. Aluku alleged that huge sums of money were spent in manipulating INEC and the military in Mr. Ayodili Fayoshi's favor. Our political correspondent, Sho Okimbaloi, reports. We told us in attendance that Ayo Fauci will stand in for him. January 31st, 2016, Dr. Tope Aluko on Channel Television. He is a former secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State. Here he gave damning revelations on how he claims the Ekiti 2014 governorship election was rigged. Force was high, he said the military was manipulated. Then he revealed on the monies given and the source and even how some INEC officials were manipulated. Governor Fauci's aid on the program that day said Dr. Aluko's claims are mere blackmail. Just about three months down the line, Dr. Aluko appears to be retracing his steps. At the Lagos Hotel, he's seen visiting Governor Fauci, the man he passionately condemned and marked as a political foe and betrayer. 
when asked, he said he has come to make peace with Mr. Fayashi. No, this is not about position. This is about peace. This is about misunderstanding. This is about talking together. This is about family community. This is about um, uh, women in Nigeria stepping in. And that's what we have achieved now. But does this mean all he said in January are not true, even the several evidence he gave? You gave far-reaching allegations about the governor. Are you, ret are you retracting those what things? What I am saying is that as far as there are people that are on it, and there are issues that we are talking about, but what I am saying now is that I'm here and he's here. We did the wedding yesterday. And tonight, you see us, you can see that there are very many Nigerians around, and the whole family. We have dissolved. Are you saying that all of those things that you said are not no, true? we are moving for Shim. We are moving forward. Dr. Farage says Dr. Aluko came to him to make peace, but how far were the recent allegations on him? There's peace. Yeah. I mean, show that there's, there's, peace. Peace. there's peace. And there's uh, a step forward beyond what it is to be. Have you forgiven him, sir? Well, you see, whether, whether you are talking of forgiveness, I do could miss my boy and my son. Like I said, whatever has happened, even if, if, if whatever you are saying in the public, land, whatever you say, whatever you are saying, there's time to move forward beyond that. Politics most times is a pure game of interest, and in this case, it appears that is exactly what is playing out. One would imagine what becomes of Dr. Aluko's relationship with the APC in a state, considering the new development and its future in the PDP is another kettle of fish altogether. Such an interesting twist in equity politics has yet again been thrown up. Shion Wakimbale reporting for Channel's Television News. We turn to other issues. Now it's been almost like a bad dream that's refusing to go away. The fuel scarcity, which has persisted nationwide, continues to create hardship for Nigerians. Today, our correspondents again went round major cities and towns across the country, and they report varying degrees of commotion and hardship being faced by the people. <laughs> The fuel scarcity in the country is still biting hard on residents as they continue to queue with no hope of getting the product. Long queues persist at the NNPC mega station in Oshogo, Oshun State. Motorists have waited too long and nature has taken its course. Business activities are bearing the brunt in Ogun State. Just a few vehicles are plying the roads and passengers have no option but to wait several hours to get transportation to their destinations. It affects my business where we're 200 per liter. Some people they said it, black market, 250, 300. It's not good at all. It's the same story in Umaya, the Abia state capital. <laughs> Travelers lament the increase in cost of transportation caused by the scarcity. The system has been destabilized. And when you buy fuel 150 today, the next police station will save 160. The next one will save 170. The Department of Petroleum Resources sealed off five petrol stations in Kaduna for hoarding and selling petrol above the official pump price of 86 naira 50 cobalt per liter. The fuel scarcity is still persisting in Edo and Lagos states. This is money. I won't be selling any keg here. We are ready. And these people are just wasting their time because we are only selling for vehicles. I, I, I believe government have the means to go after the black marketers. If you check the economy, everybody is dependent on fuel. Organizer, Baba, Taylor. Check it out. For three days, three or four days now, they've not been bringing light. So how do you want people to do? And you know SMEs are the backbone of the economy. All these people that I mentioned earlier, they, they are the backbone of them. And if you don't have this floor to do their business, how do you want them to go about earning their living? 
In Delta states, the roads are very busy with vehicles, but the product is sold at a very high price between 180 naira to 200 naira per liter. It's not good. It's not good for us at all at all. As Nigerians, we have this fuel, we have the resources like they said, but I wonder why we should be suffering in this way. It's a different story in Imo State. The product is available with no queues, but the issue is the pricing. Petrol is sold between 155 Naira to 200 Naira per liter. The DPR is not taking any chances in carrying out its duties. Very, uh, serious with them who are shortchanging uh, the general public by not selling at the government regulated price for 86 naira 50 kobo or who may be in these guys selling you know less quantities for the customers in place of you know what they should ordinarily buy so we are checking for under dispensing and overpricing The scarcity is no doubt taking its toll on businesses and other activities across the country. And when exactly this will end remains unclear, as the authorities and regulatory bodies concerned appear to be speaking from both sides of the mouth. The Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, says the protracted scarcity of fuel in Nigeria amounts to a violation of the United Nations International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights by the Federal Government. As a issued by the group notes that the scarcity of petrol has not only deprived Nigerians of unquantifiable economic opportunities, it has also subjected them to unwarranted torture and degrading experiences. SERAP adds that even though fuel scarcity crisis predated the current administration, it is time President Mahmoud Buhari, who doubles as the Minister of Petroleum Resources, rises to the occasion to find a permanent solution. In part two after the break, we'll be joining our Abuja studios for stories on the Army General retired over election irregularities and the military operations in the Northeast. Please stay with us. Thank you.